Do you remember that time I said things were going to get progressively weird? It's happening. <laughs> so this week, uh, it's not clothing that we are making. No. It's friendship. It's uniqueness. It's terrifying. Some might say out of the ordinary. Grow up. They can grow up. What we're making is now dear to my heart. Also, it might kill me in my sleep. Um, so there is a YouTube channel called H3H3 Productions. It's actually a good channel. They have some really hilarious content. And one particular video my dear brother has become obsessed with. I'm gonna link it in the description. I don't even know how to like link it on the page. Maybe one day. If you haven't seen it or heard of them, honestly, you really need to watch it before watching this video because it's just not gonna make sense. What we are making this week is called a dunny. I feel a lot of you may not know what that is. That's why I stress Watch the video in the description. H3H3 H3 Productions, Jeff Dunham, an Odyssey. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, give me, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, la, la, la. Ah. Anyway, here is a picture of the doll. It will make more sense once you watch it. And at the same time, still make zero. It's basically a video of them. Just ripping on Jeff Dunham. <laughs> anyway, Ethan Klein, the guy from H3H3, has a doll in it. He calls it a dunny. It's like, watch the video, okay? Watch it, and then you'll get what I'm talking about. Uh, it's really not that much intro. This is gonna be a weird video. I guess it's helpful, like, you want to make a normal stuffed animal. <laughs> if you are the kind of person that likes regular, normal, regular, <laughs> not out of the ordinary things, this isn't your week. This isn't going to be for you. If you like stuff that might haunt your dreams, I got, I got you, boo. You ever choke hold your friends? <sighs> I don't really know what else to say. I'm making a dunny <laughs> doll. That's it. All right, <clears throat> let's get weird. I know. Shh. I know. So I don't normally make things without some pre-existing template or pattern to use. Usually I'm tracing a garment or using a pattern from somewhere online. I started by writing down exactly what pattern pieces I would need to draw in order to make a complete dunny. I decided I'd need two arms, two legs, a head and a torso. Uh, this seems pretty obvious, but I wanted to think it through and make sure I wouldn't have to break any of these pieces down further. I just wanted to make sure I knew what the hell I was getting in for. And here's what I came up with. <laughs> I've uploaded the pattern I used if anybody is weird and amazing enough to want to make one. I don't have any footage of the actual drawing process because for most of it, my body was so far over the piece of paper in concentration that I would have wrecked every shot. For this project, I used one meter of pink velour fabric, polyester stuffing, pinking shears, a fabric pen, and pins. The pen I used is air and water soluble. I trace every piece before cutting it. You definitely don't have to do this. I just find it easier sometimes, especially with the pinking shears, than maneuvering around the pattern. You also don't have to start with the torso. I did so that I wouldn't accidentally leave myself without enough leftover fabric for the largest piece. Look at me go pretending to think things through. After tracing, I pin the fabric together before cutting so that it doesn't move around on me. You will need two pieces for the torso. And as always, place your pattern properly with the stretch of the fabric. 
You will also need two pieces for the head. For the legs, you will need four cut out pieces of fabric. And because I'm lazy, I cut out all four pieces at once. To do this, I folded the fabric in half once, pinned in place, then folded it again and pinned in place again. Then I fit the pattern on and pinned that in place. I take my pinning very seriously. I will say that the cutting process through four layers of fabric, I mean, it's not the best, but it's also not the worst. There was maybe a bit of a wonk on a line or two, but nothing too heinous. Follow the same process for the arm pieces. This material left me covered in pink fuzz. I wanted to show you all just how much it did while also looking like I might give birth. Four layers of pink flaps. Ow, ow! After cutting out the arm pieces, I noticed that the forearm and hands looked really thin and was worried that my dunny might be suffering from an eating disorder. <laughs> but really, I wanted to make sure I didn't make it unmanageably small, so I sewed it first. For the parts I thought would be excessively thin, I sewed as close to the edge as I could. Don't do this. It's not recommended or good for the longevity of your dunny. I just didn't want to cut out new pieces. And if and when holes pop up, I'll shittily mend them. The hands are definitely awkward and the thumb was frustrating to get around. Anytime you need to change the direction of the stitch, leave your needle in the fabric. This part is very important. Lift your foot, spin the fabric however you need, then lower your foot and carry on. The end result actually didn't turn out as bunged up as I had expected. Although the stitch is uncomfortably close to the edge, other than a couple of small holes I'll have to fix it look. Other than a couple of small holes I'll have to fix, it looked pretty good. Next, I sewed together the head. Sew all the way around except for the bottom. This will be attached to the main body piece. <laughs> Pin the legs together all the way around until the upper inside part. Pin this part to the other leg and this will become your crotch butt. I am so terrible at explaining this stuff sometimes, so I at least have to make it slightly funny. The crotch butt will be a little difficult to sew up without leaving a small hole. After pinning it together, I couldn't stop laughing at how absurd it looked. This is by far the strangest and best thing I've ever made. You'll want to sew around the legs first, and then the gunt slash butt crack after. <laughs> My strategy to avoid having a small crotch hole was really groundbreaking. I just sewed the seams as close together as I could, overlapping them if necessary. As you can see, it seems to have worked, for now at least. After turning the legs right side out, I noticed the little feeties looked a little too different from one another. The one had a nice curve to it, while the other one looked like more of a nub than a foot. I attempted to trace the stitch line of the one foot onto the other so I could match the shape better. After some finagling, this mostly worked. Before sewing the torso, in order to get my placement of the limbs slightly more accurate, I folded the torso in half and marked where the center fell. I also measured the width of the torso and marked where the center of that would be and everything seemed to line up. I matched the seam of the head with the center of the torso and marked where that would lie. Then I marked where I wanted my arm to be and copied it onto the other side. What? Last, I marked the height it looked like the torso would fit the legs and double checked it was the same on both sides. With our new marks in place for the torso, we will only be sewing together along the shoulders and sides, remembering to leave holes for the head, arms, and legs. When pinning the legs to the torso, start by matching up the side seams. Then pin all the way around. I had some excess flesh from the torso, but that's all right. I'll just cut it away later. I also made sure that my seams were pinned open so that when I sewed over them, they'd lie flat. I just thought this was a nice little shot of sewing over an open flapped seam. I did have a very small hole on the side there that I had to sew up. I should have probably sewed down along the torso a little more before attaching the legs. Next, I pinned on the arms. 
I marked off where the center of the arms would be because the seams will not be matching up with the torso this time, so this will help me align things properly. Pin the center marks of the arm to the armhole seams. Make sure that you're pinning it so when everything is turned right side out, your arms are going to be pointing forward and the thumbs will be up. Pin all the way around the armholes and sew it up. After staring at this for long enough, I regret every decision I've ever made in life. I tried hand stitching the neck hole shut a little bit more, but it kept looking horrible, so I decided to scrap that idea. I used the marks I previously made on the head and matched it up with the seams of the neck hole. Remember, you again want to pin it so that when it's turned right side out, the head will point forward. Unless you're trying to get real weird, which uh, I support. I managed to pin the head right sides together about halfway around before it became too awkward. I did not feel like dealing with how annoying it would be to maneuver that part of the neck hole under my sewing machine, so I hand sewed it using a back stitch. If you need more information about what this stitch is, I have added a YouTube link in the description. I'm not the best at hand sewing, but uh, probably good enough for a dunny f doll, you know, I would think. You can also see I use my pins to create a straight line as a semi guideline to keep my stitch straight. As a tip for turning the doll right side out, I used a knitting needle for the smaller, more tricky areas. It also helps if you trim away excess material. When I stuffed the head, I noticed it had a Cro-Magnon style forehead, so I sewed a new line with a better slope to make it less caveman and more pinhead. To close up the neck, I finished it with a ladder stitch. Again, for more information, check the link in the description. For the knot, I attempted to hide it using a technique that I saw a long time ago and definitely did wrong. In the future, it's good to look things up if you aren't an impatient shithead. Maybe the girl in the link can help you more than I did. <laughs> oh dear god. That means it's done. Done. Oh, we're done. <laughs> oh, hello. Welcome back. How are your dreams? How are your nightmares? Is he a part of them now? Julie, I've started the outro. <laughs> He's here with me, guys. Give it up for Dunny. Jeff Dunny, everyone. His neck is like. A little bit loose. Probably should have stuffed it more. Did you guys enjoy the video? Is this something you wanted to see in your lifetime? Hey, 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 hey. How do you think he turned out? Oh, stop it. Mm, no. <laughs> okay, one more. Ah! Yes. This is the... This is my son. This will be the greatest thing I ever achieve. It's not an exact duplicate of the H3, H3 one. However, it is 90% more terrifying. And in that regard, it's perfect. <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts. The little nosy and this little weird ass lip. After I made this, uh, I kept leaving him in random places to scare the hell out of my roommates. <laughs> Mission accomplished. So, as I said in the video, I have attached a pattern so that if you want to make this thing, <laughs> then you can. Like I said, it's not the exact same as the H3 H3 one, but if you want this, then you can have it. In the pattern, I did make the arms and hands a little fatter so that you don't get into the same kind of problem I had where I was sewing like right on the edge. Another thing too, these guys are kind of hard to stuff. Just be aware, I used a knitting needle. You're welcome. 
Oh my god. <laughs> if you do make a dunny, for the love of god, tag me in a picture of it on Instagram. Because, oh, oh. Honestly, just knowing there's another one out there, that's everything. Mm. If you guys like this video, then please subscribe to my channel. I need to keep making things like this. Obviously, you need to see it. If you don't subscribe to me, then um, I'm sorry. It's coming after you. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed yourself. Follow me on the socials. See she's. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Hools and Thread. That is such a clever name. <laughs> yes! <laughs> this cute little snuggle bunny for you to take home and put in your bed and be best friends with and might also strangle you in your sleep. He makes a good pillow though. If you think of anything weird you want me to make, please let me know. I will obviously do it. Look at this. <laughs> Honestly guys, thank you so much for watching. I've been having just a ball of a time making these things. All right guys, this has been sufficiently strange. Uh, I'm gonna end it, but I will see y'all next week. Uh, bye. Uh...